forget about egoism. You're not an egoist. Most people totally believe in the existence of something they call egoism. And by this egoism, they don't just mean a sense of individuality and taking care of that individual, which is great, but they mean some evil tendency to go after one's own needs, regardless of how it makes others feel. If you believe in any bad sense of egoism, please give me a chance to talk you out of it. We're all first and foremost responsible for meeting our own needs. Who can take better care of you than you? You are the one who knows best what you want and what you need and how to meet those needs and wants. So you are the best caretaker of yourself, of your body, of your psyche. And the same for other people. They are the best caretakers of themselves. Some people have few needs and so they have a lot of free space inside their mind to go and do good for others. And other people have many needs. Maybe they have had um, a lot of difficult experiences in life and a lot of baggage from that. And so they have a lot of neediness in their psyche um, or they have a lot of physical needs. And so they have less space to do good for others because they're so preoccupied with meeting all their own needs and wants. And sometimes they, they might be so preoccupied with meeting their own needs that they don't have any space inside their own mind to even consider how that affects others. And those are usually the people that other people would call egoists because they might harm other people in the process of meeting their own needs. And if someone like that harms you, it's a healthy choice to enforce your boundaries or to even leave the relationship if necessary. But it doesn't mean that those people are evil harm doers. They're not egoists in the sense of evil harm doers, not caring at all about other people. They're just very caught up into meeting their own needs. And this might be true for you as well, if you recognize yourself in this description. So don't think of yourself as an egoist either. Don't judge anyone, including yourself, as an egoist. Just meet yourself and those people with unconditional love, empathy, embracing their learning process. Patience, patience with their learning process. And next important thing to realize about egoism is that you can do the most good for others if you first take good care of yourself. And so egoism and altruism are actually the same. I once heard Til Swan make a beautiful analogy with a cup. If you picture your happiness as filling up a cup, then it makes sense to say that only when your cup is completely filled up, it starts to flow over naturally. And I would say that at some point, this reaches the state of Buddhahood, where all the needs of the self are already taken care of and dissolved. And there's only service to others left. From a spiritual perspective, it makes sense to equal egoism and altruism as we are all one. So service to self is service to others and service to others is service to self. A life of selfless service is often misunderstood as a duty to put 
the needs of others before your own needs. And everything else ends up being called egotistical and bad. Not listening to your own needs, however, would be abandonment of the self, which is not what any truly spiritual path would advocate. If you want to live a life of service, be of service to all that you are. And that, include, that includes other selves, other people, and it also includes the individual that you are and that you have a responsibility to take care of. If others tell you you're an egoist, if you don't please them, forgive them for their needy manipulative behavior that's just coming from their own needs to control you in order to get their own needs met. Please don't internalize their judgment. Don't take their words in any way that makes you feel bad. Don't start thinking of yourself as an evil egoist. Of course you have the experience of being an individual with your own desires and your own needs and taking care of those desires and needs, for example, by saying no to something you don't want, is exactly what you need to be doing. And just like most people make a distinction between altruism and egoism, most people also make a distinction between giving and receiving. So there's a common belief that if you're giving, you're only giving, and if you're receiving, you're only receiving. While in reality, you can, it's perfectly possible to be doing both at the same time. Say you love walking with dogs, but you don't have the right circumstances in your life right now to have a dog yourself. But your busy neighbors, they have a beautiful, lovely dog, and they don't have enough time to take their dog for long walks. Then who is serving who when you start walking their dog? And especially in sex, it becomes clear that we can have mediocre experiences if we give when we actually don't want to give. And if we do things that we don't like. Well, the beautiful thing happens when you both act on only mutual desires. So if you are truly enjoying the giving, because it's a, it's a true desire of you to do that, then the giving is receiving in itself. Can you see that? When you enjoy giving so much, then it is receiving in a way. It is receiving an experience that you wanted to have. And the other way around, if someone is giving to you and enjoying it themselves so much, then you are in a way receiving, but in another way also giving that experience to the other person. So you see that receiving and giving can happen at the same time. If you both stop people pleasing and only act on mutual desires, there's no distinction anymore between giving and receiving, altruism and egoism. And that is the sweet spot. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, you would probably also like to watch the whole video lesson that this little video is actually only a part of. I just took it out of the video lesson and put it on YouTube. Um, the whole video lesson is called Stop People Pleasing, Be Strong in Your No and Powerfully You. And this video lesson is for free on my website. It's part of a bigger course I made on relationship skills. The whole course is not for free, but I put a few lessons completely on free preview, among which this one, and also a beautiful other one in which you might be interested, uh, which is on self-love. So if you click this link, and I'll put it in, this, in the description box as well, you are directly taken there. 
you can um, take those two lessons. And you don't need to make an account or give me your email address, no strings attached whatsoever. All right, um, that's it. I wish you a really great day.